Okay, so uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. My name is Nirina Toma, and today I will present you a serious game developed together with my colleagues uh, from the Polytechnic University of Bucharest uh, called Escape from Dungeon. Uh, this game uses natural language processing techniques for extracting user intentions from uh, different texts. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's see what serious games are. Um, as the name says, says of course, uh, these are games that um, um, have a serious side. So they introduce educational content into basic games. Uh, through these games, users uh, learn new concepts or exercise previous knowledge in a fun and interactive environment. Uh, this way, so using gamification methods, players are motivated to stay uh, longer in the game, so to play more. Um, hence, uh, enlarging the learning process duration and the whole um, um, the motivation process can be done through different uh, goals that are set in the game, uh, maybe competitions, encourage collaboration between users, set achievements, win trophies and so on. Um, serious games are used in a wide variety of domains, so they can be um, uh, used as simulators in the healthcare or in the military environment, or um, they, can, uh, they can be social games uh, in a corporate environment, or of course can be used for, uh, for education. Uh, usually these games um, simulate real life situations, uh, but lower very much the costs and the risks of the whole process. Uh, even though they have so many benefits, um, the serious games market is still underdeveloped compared to the, to the whole gaming industry. Uh, for the current paper, we research game that, games that use NLP techniques and discovered uh, their low points. So most of them are unattractive for the users uh, because they have low graphics. So this is uh, one major issues, issue. Um, afterwards, they, um, they might have hard-coded content or limited content and also limited game scenarios and interaction for the game. Our game called Escape from Dungeon uh, wants to, um, um, to overcome these drawbacks and this was the main uh, research question that we wanted to, to follow. Uh, so from a graphical point of view, uh, we use the Unity game engine to offer 3D graphics and uh, also the possibility to deploy the application on multiple platforms. So from uh, desktop devices, so PCs or laptops, to mobile devices and even uh, virtual reality uh, support. Also, uh, because we wanted to make the environment more realistic, uh, we use the first person perspective for the game interaction. Uh, so users could better relate uh, with the surroundings, so with the game environment, and be part of the game, so feel as they are part of the game. Uh, from a content perspective, uh, the user solves puzzles and answers to general knowledge questions in order to escape from a dungeon. Uh, the interaction with the main character uh, is done through vocal commands because um, the user actually instructs his uh, butler or server, or how you want to call it, uh, to perform actions on his or her behalf. Uh, these commands are interpreted by the system and um, uh, different actions are ex extracted from uh, the commands and afterwards applied uh, in the graphical interface. This is the main flow that um, um, a command from the user um, goes through in order to uh, uh, be represented in the UI. Uh, so first of all, uh, users elaborate a spoken request, which we refer to as an utterance. As an utterance. And this utterance is uh, passed through a text-to-speech uh, tool, such as uh, IBM Watson. Afterwards, uh, from, the, uh, from the text, uh, we identify intents and entities. And um, after identifying this, we just uh, transpose the actions in the UI. So for example, if the user says, move to the door and open the door, uh, this vocal command will be transformed into text 
and afterwards pass through with the AI, uh, which detects the intents um, that the user wants to move and open, and the entities, uh, which will be the door. So the, the user wants to move and open the door. And these are later on uh, translated into uh, graphical, um, into the graphical interface. Okay, now uh, uh, let's go through, uh, through all these technologies. Uh, so as previously said, we use IBM Watson uh, to transform speech to text and also uh, the reverse process. Uh, we want to generate speech from text. Uh, this software identifies, so one main advantage uh, that we considered when using this software was that um, it identifies words as they are spoken and also it corrects words at the same time. Um, if the user maybe has a bad pronunciation or uh, uses, um, um, uses wrongfully some, some of the words. Uh, so, uh, there is no major delay from the point that the user emits this utterance to the point that uh, the command is executed in the UI. Um, also, the response from, the, um, uh, from this tool, so from IBM Watson, uh, it's a JSON object which is easily parsable by any system. Um, and this contains uh, pairs of uh, word and the correctness uh, probability of the word. Uh, next, we use uh, with AI uh, for um, intent and um, entities identification, as I previously said. Uh, with AI is a tool that uses uh, NLP to transfer text to transform text into structured data, so the computer could understand it. Uh, it can identify uh, multiple elements such as locations, emotions, numbers, or um, some custom entities and intents defined by developers. Uh, here, intents are used to understand the meaning of a sentence and entities uh, describe the details of the user tasks. As previously said, that example with go to the door and open the door, uh, door was an entity and the actions were intents. Uh, the NLP model that WITAI uses uh, must cover all possible intentions uh, that the user might have and also understand and predict the most likely intents and their corresponding, uh, corresponding entities, of course. Um, this is why with AI recommends, if possible and when possible, uh, to use built-in entities and intents because uh, they are trained, these are trained over um, a larger data set, so over the whole with AI data set. In case of uh, intent uh, identification failure, uh, the application must find a way to cope with this and to, to address it. Um, the application might use um, other linked ontologies in order to identify the intents and entities. Uh, but currently, because we are um, at the first step of, at the first version of this game, uh, we just uh, ignore the unknown input and ask the user to rephrase the command or even to repeat it. After the user commands are understood by the system and we correctly identify the intents and also the entities, uh, we must match these with the elements from the UI in order to transpose the, um, uh, the corresponding user action. Uh, this is why each object from the game scene, so from the Unity game scene, is identifiable through a tag. And that tag corresponds to uh, an entity name. Uh, to make the game experience uh, more realistic, we added some uh, constraints uh, for uh, interacting with the objects. Uh, so all objects should be available in the active scene. Uh, so one user uh, cannot open the door if there is no door in the scene. Also should be in the visual range of the player and within a reachable radius. So in a reachable distance. Uh, currently our game is composed by two rooms. Uh, the first room uh, it's, um, has an entertaining purpose. Uh, we just want the user to, familiar, to be familiar with uh, our possible actions, so the commands that he, uh, he can say. Also, um, if uh, the user, um, if 
uh, the user uh, cannot interact with the application or doesn't know how to interact with it, we give him some uh, verbal uh, instructions. And here is where we um, uh, use the IBM Watson speech generation um, feature. And the second room, uh, you may see it also in the right part of my screen. Um, uh, it's uh, basically a quiz where we ask um, the player some general knowledge questions. Uh, so, for example, in this picture, the, um, um, uh, the player chose uh, famous paintings. And now he must guess, guess the name of this, pen, of this painting. Uh, in order to pass to the next room, he must uh, correctly answer, um, answer uh, the question. And he must uh, just uh, state the number of the correct answer. So in this case, one. Uh, the game was tested uh, through a survey, actually more of a pilot test because um, the survey involved only 10 users. Uh, they had to fill in uh, 15, um, uh, 15 questions, which had answers on a five point Likert scale. And also, we asked their opinion through free, free input questions. Uh, the, first, um, the first part of the survey covered uh, general feedback, uh, graphics, um, and the identification of indents and entities, and also the game content. Uh, for, the, for the first uh, 15 questions, um, we um, uh, calculated some reliability statistics, uh, ICC and Kronbach Salva. Um, and we um, saw that between the users, we had a low level of uh, agreement. Uh, this was mostly because um, um, uh, players regarded differently the game accessibility and also the game me mechanics. Uh, but on the other side, from the uh, free um, uh, from the feedback gathered from the uh, free input questions, uh, we found out that uh, the users considered uh, the game fun and innovative. Uh, they liked the game and required more scenes and also a higher level of difficulty in the scenes. Unfortunately, 50% of the users encountered difficulties when interacting with the characters uh, because the voice recognition software did not uh, respond as they expected. Uh, they complained some of the uh, vocal commands were not properly understood by the character and also that the character did not follow their, uh, their commands. Uh, this will be something to integrate in the next version of the game. Uh, together with um, adding uh, new game scenes, of course, new puzzles, entities, and the intents. Uh, for example, uh, new actions that we want to, uh, to add to the game are uh, uh, throw, break, and craft, uh, because we want to give the game a more realistic look and uh, new ways to interact with the objects from the inventory. Uh, so, for example, um, users could uh, throw an object at a designated target or even on the floor just to discard the um, object from their inventory. Uh, they could break objects and also craft new objects uh, from two or more um, um, available uh, inventory objects. Um, afterwards, we want to add um, multiplayer support because uh, we think that it would encourage uh, student, student collaboration. Uh, and also together with this to integrate some uh, virtual um, classroom support where teachers would be offered the, uh, the possibility to create uh, personalized content and personalized quizzes uh, to set a time limit uh, for exiting the, uh, the dungeon and also uh, disabling the usage of some objects. And uh, together with this feature, we could also include uh, um, templating, so templating facilities uh, for using the online content sharing between teachers. Um, as a conclusion, um, Escape the Dungeon is a serious game that integrates uh, top technologies for speech recognition, speech uh, generation. Uh, it's also available in virtual reality. Uh, the player is controlled through vocal commands from uh, which um, uh, we identify intents and entities in order to uh, transpose them into the um, graphical interface. 
Uh, the, the game was tested for a pilot test. Um, we had two parts of the survey, 15 questions, and afterwards, uh, free free input uh, questions. Uh, but the game was described the fun and innovative by the players. They wanted to play more and to have more complex uh, scenarios to, to follow. Thank you very much. Um, if you have questions, feel free to ask me. Thank you very much, Irina, for the interesting presentation. Uh, if there are any questions, please. Can I, can, hi, yes. can I ask a question? Um, sure. Irina, how, how did you set up your system with, uh, in the beginning, I mean, the, the first configuration and setup of your system with entities and intents, uh, what method or technique did you use? And how do you think of upgrading with uh, what method and technique to upgrade with new entities and uh, intents your system? Uh, so uh, we used uh, some uh, predefined entities and intents that WITAI AI offers because uh, these are tested over um, over a larger data set. Uh, but also we um, um, extracted uh, uh, new entities uh, and um, uh, we trained them, I think, over Wikipedia, which is uh, a large data set. Uh, now we want to, um, uh, for the new entities, to um, um, establish some, um, um, let's say, some workflow in the UI to see how we want to interact with those entities and intents so to limit uh, the amount of uh, interactions that we want to offer the user. And afterwards, we will also um, um, upload them into with AI and, um, of course, train them over uh, over with the data set and probably uh, also Wikipedia. So your initial data, entities and intents, were not contextualized for, contextualized for the specific game or for gaming at all? Uh, no, no, they weren't for gaming because they are uh, some basic intents and entities. Uh, they are not very specific. But of course, if you want to um, well, go into game specifics, then uh, we will need some um, um, uh, more of a customized data set, let's say, personalized. Thank you very much, Irina. Thank you. Uh, and, and another, yes, please. What, uh, sorry, and as an addition to what Irina said, we're currently working on alternative solutions, so not transferring the data to Facebook. So with AI, we're building our dialogue management system. So we're working on RASA and Spacey pipeline, including Romanian support. So, and there we will have custom rules, so custom intents that will be learned from pre-scripted interaction. Yeah, but, but, but the issue was exactly that, Mihai. It's uh, no, how, in, in how this you paper, get yes. data, how you get, not, not the architecture, of course, you can have a dialogue flow or use some other technology. The issue here is really how you set up the entities and the intents that normally have to be contextualized, like we do localization in software. Here, exactly. there's a different kind of localization that has to do with, with speech, as you know, as an expert in the area. No, okay, thank you, but that was the issue. We have similar problems here. <laughs> Thank you again, Irina and Mihai. And uh, now, um...